to New Providence Baptist Church as we begin our service on this Sunday before Christmas. I invite you, if you will, to stand and sing with us today. We have reason to be joyful today. Sing with us as we begin our service. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let us She's had COVID. Did you have surgery as well? No? I thought you had something else go wrong with it. Oh, no, you hurt yourself. A stress fracture. I understand. I have one every week at this location. <laughs> so I understand how that is. All right. But you're here for a few days or weeks? Till New Year's. All right. Well, we're glad you're here. Appreciate what you're doing. Glad you're doing well. I know your mom is excited. And uh, by the way, I just want you to know that... <clears throat> During, we delivered some boxes, Christmas in a box, to the kids' ministry families. If you didn't get one, I apologize, but we tried to get them to all of our kids' families. And I brought one to your family's apartment. And you all live on the third floor of the tallest building in Loudoun County. <laughs> and you all do not have an elevator. So I, your family is in shape, I'm just to tell you. <laughs> I mean, I collapsed when I got to the top of the stairs. And, uh, but anyway, we, we're glad you're back. Hope you enjoy your stay here. I see you got some of the family with you. Uh, uh, Alex, she's not here yet. Has she been in yet? She's coming. Okay. 
show up, they'll all be in then. That'll make mom happy. All right. Well, we appreciate you. Glad you're here. Glad you're doing well. All right. Let's have a word of prayer for our faith during this time. Father, we come to you, ask you to cleanse and forgive us. Thank you for all you do. Thank you for our men and women that are willing to give up their life, Lord, to protect and to serve ours. We're grateful. Lord, I'm thankful for her life and her testimony. And Lord, I pray that you'll continue to bless her and her family and all those in, in connection with her. May they bring blessings blessings to your name. In Christ's name we ask it. Amen. God bless you. All right. Announcements today. Six o'clock service is on as of right now. Brother Charles Van Valkenburg will be preaching tonight. Everybody look back to the back of Charles. He's at the computer. It's his birthday today. Happy birthday. And, and if you notice, Charles raised his left hand because he can't raise his right hand because he's tore something in his arm. He says it's like a muscle of some sort. I believe it's probably just a tendon. <laughs> but, you know, anyway, he's going to have to have surgery for a little thing. And, you know, when you get old, Charles, you just start falling apart. <laughs> you're only 25 in your dreams. All right. So let's see what else. Uh, oh, uh, uh, Christmas Eve service is, is still on schedule for 3 and 5 o'clock. Go save a seat on that so we know how many people is coming. Uh, in case we have to make a decision on uh, having that service or not, all right? Uh, we're just doing the best we can, flexible as we can. I hope you will be as well, all right? Anything else we're missing? I think that's all the announcements. Glad you're here. Pray the Lord speak a word to you. Go for it, Mitch. It's been a strange year, and, and in some respects, we're glad to, to be approaching the end of it. But, you know, there have always been strange times and strange occurrences, and Imagine being a shepherd out in a field and all of a sudden an angel appears. And talk about strange and different, unusual, but Christmas is a time for us to, to come together. And it's, again, been different this year. But one of the things that I enjoy most about Christmas is the music and the carols that we, we don't get to sing any other time of year, but they, they do something about them, something familiar. They're old familiar carols play. I think that's a, that's a, yeah, it's a line too, but we invite you just to stand and sing and celebrate and worship and just thank God for the joy that we have today.
we've sang this song, uh, actually the last couple of Sundays, but I just invite you to sing today and, and to worship Christ the newborn King with us today. His name shall be wonderful counselor. We still have much reason to celebrate. God is with us and he is, he is here. And throughout this entire year, throughout this entire morning, he is in control. He is still on the throne. And he is still God. And we are here to give him praise and thanks and glory. And um, with, with we who are gathered here in his name today, um, because he knew everything that happened this year before it happened, he knew everything that would happen today and he is God and we can rest assured that we are in his perfect plan and, and we can take comfort in his perfect peace. So we invite you just to worship today. We did this uh, song last year in our, our Christmas program. It's
going to be a little different this morning, obviously. Uh, but I'm thankful for the choir that I do have today. And uh, just, just worship God today.
scare me, but man, I got it turned on. I can't. Turned on? On. It's green. So Luke chapter 1. Lord, I pray that this morning you would add your blessings upon the reading of your word, and Lord, I pray that you would do according to your word, according to your will. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. All right, you can be seated. <clears throat> so I, I said that I like Christmas music, and um, one of my favorite Christmas songs is is written by one of my favorite comedians, Mark Lowry. He wrote the words to the song, and the name of the song is Mary Did You Know. Now, I don't know if you knew he wrote that, but it's hard to imagine when you see him and listen to him that he could write that song, but he did. 
And as a matter of fact, he wrote it. It laid, as you will, we'll say, kind of dormant for almost seven years until someone picked it up, pinned the music to go along with it, and then sang it. It didn't come out until about 1991, and it was called Mary Did You Know. Can you imagine being Mary? Can you just fathom this for just a minute? Here's what happens in Mary's life. She is at home in a place in in Galilee called Nazareth, which was realistically a town that was looked down upon. It was considered what we would say today a hick town. The lower class people lived there. You didn't really want to go there, but here is where Mary is. And Mary's in her place, in her home, not bothering anybody, not doing anything to anybody, and the angel appears unto her. And and so I just wonder, Mary, did you know? Well, first of all, as you look at this, you've got to look at Mary's character. Mary's character, in, in verse 26, it says that, and in the sixth month of the angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city of Galilee named Nazareth to this virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David and the virgin's name was Mary. She lived in Nazareth. She lived in a lowly place. It wasn't the cream of the crop city. It wasn't the best place to live in, but that's where Mary was. She was a humble individual and she was in her place. And not only was she a humble individual, but she was living a humble life consecrated unto the Lord. It says that she was pure. Now, I'm in a Facebook group with a bunch of different children's pastors and, and children's ministries and all kinds of things related to that. And every year I get so aggravated because I get this, this question pops up. Every year in all of these groups, how do I explain to my kids about Mary being a virgin. How can that be so hard to understand? How can that be so complicated that we can't not fathom that and we're afraid to teach that to our kids? I tell you, I'm promising you this, I teach your kids, I teach other kids, and I deal with kids all the time, and I'm telling you, they know, they know far, more than, far more than you think they do. We can't sit on the sidelines thinking that they don't. We have to be proactive and share with them what it is. Mary was not ever been with a man. And now the angel comes to her and says, Hey, guess what? You're going to have a baby. Now, number one, I got to tell you, if I was Mary, I'd already be freaked out because there's an angel in my house talking to me. Okay? Some of y'all... Don't think anything about that because y'all talk to yourself all the time anyway. But I'm going to tell you, that's just not the norm, okay? So there's an angel in her house, and she says, I want you to know that this, this, this is going to happen. And Mary says, well, it can't happen because I've not been with a man ever. And the angel says, don't you worry about that part. The angel is saying, hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women. Not only do you see her place and her purity, but you see God's plan. See, it's not about us. It's not about what you think. It's not about your position. It's not about your place. It's about what God's plan is for your life. You see, when I came here 12, 13 years ago, I came to be the educational minister at this church. I remember, as a matter of fact, the day, the night, in the business meeting that y'all, that, that the church was voting whether or not to call me or not, I was sitting right back here in what is now the prayer room. It was my office. My stuff was already in the office. I was sitting there doing work and in my office. And the church was out here voting on whether to call me to be an associate pastor. You said, what were you doing? I knew what the Lord was up to. I was already here whether they called me or not. I was going to be here anyway. It it didn't matter because I knew God's plan. I was so understanding of his position in my life that I knew I was going to follow him. It didn't matter where. Do you seriously, I mean, think this, think this through. Do you seriously think I would come down here and work with preacher Mark if God was not in that? (laughs) I mean, hello. God had to be all over that. 
As a matter of fact, it took me almost three years to get to that point because we were at a conference one day and when the conference was over, my wife and I went back to the room and, and we were laying there in the bed and I said, you know what? She said, no what? And I said, I'm going to go and be on staff with Preacher Mark one day. She said, oh no you won't. Showed her, didn't I? <laughs> Sometimes when God's got a bigger plan, listen, we just got to go along with the plan. Sure, our plans change. Sure, our situation changed. And Mary was laying there, if you can imagine, content with where she was in her life. And God's plan changed her life drastically. You know, one thing you learn as you read the account of the Christmas story, there, there's a phrase there that's very popular, very prominent. It's fear not. I, is that not a word that we need to hear today? Listen, listen to me very carefully when I say this. When I say fear not today, I want us not to be afraid of God's plan. Are we afraid of the pandemic? Are we afraid of the situation? Are we afraid of the consequences of that? Absolutely, you sure are going to be, but God's still in control. God's still in control. Do you think the pandemic caught God off guard? No. It didn't catch him off guard. It caught us off guard. We had to learn to do some things differently, adapt and change the way that we do things, and we've learned a lot of different things in the last year. But it never caught God off guard. We can't fear if we're following God. And Mary decided that she would follow God. As, as you look, and, and, and the, the angel starts talking in verse 31, it says, Behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb... And bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great. He shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father, David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be? Seeing I know not a man. Who is Jesus? Who was Mary's child? Who was Mary's child? Well, it tells us right up front who is, what his name is going to be. His name is going to be Jesus. There, there's music in that name. There's salvation in that name. And the name of Jesus is not just going to be a name of Jesus, but it's going to be a, a name that's going to be known clear across the nations. He shall be great. And shall give him unto him the throne of his father David, it says in verse 32. Not only is he going to be great, but he's going to have a royalty about him. He, his name's going to be good. His fame's going to be good. And his reign's going to be far-reaching. Do you realize that we still call the name Jesus today? That, that's the name that the angel presented unto Mary. That's the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. That name is still being called out today. It's one that we've held on to. It's one that has great fame about it. And not just the fame that we talk about today with these, these athletes and these actors and all this kind of stuff. It's the fame that has some substance to it because it can do something for you. See, those, I, I, I watched football all day yesterday. I don't know what you did, but I, I watched football all day yesterday and, and, and enjoyed most of the games that I watched. There was one that I didn't care that much for, the first one. But anyway, after Tennessee lost, the rest of them got pretty good, all right? And, and, and watched them, and man, there are some unbelievable athletes out there. And they were making catches with one hand and diving and doing all kinds of stuff. And it was just phenomenal how they were doing it. And as I was sitting there in my chair watching these guys do this amazing stuff, I thought, how could they possibly think that they could do that without Jesus Christ? And the sad part is some of them do. Some of them think it's all about them. 
That's, it's because of their training. It's because of their ability, their, 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 their given ability that they forget that part that it's a God-given ability. And, and some of them give God credit. Don't, don't misread what I'm saying, but I'm saying to you, the majority do not. And the majority of folks that follow them are the ones that think and place them up on a pedestal when we got to realize there's only one that deserves to be on the pedestal and his name's Jesus. That name, that name that has the fame, that name that has the recognition, that name that is going to be and was the king and going to be the king, not just for now, but forever. You know, as this pandemic goes and, and the things keep happening in reference to it, <clears throat> somebody asked me this past week, said, Pastor Gary, do you realize that some people just kind of get to the point where they think it's just better off to be go on and be with the Lord. <laughs> I'm in that number. Do I think it'd be better off to be home with the Lord? Absolutely. Now, I'm not willing to jump on the next bus to get there, okay? I'm not doing anything to promote that time, but I'm telling you, I'd much rather be in heaven today. I wouldn't have to be worrying about the sound system. wouldn't have to be worrying about whether the video is working and the computers are working and, and somebody's going to not be able to be here because of sickness. I'm not going to have to worry about whether I put that mask on or not or whether I take the vaccine or not. All those things would be put aside because God says that when I get to heaven, it's not going to just be a place. It's going to be a perfect place because of Jesus. Not because I get there. Not because of what I've done to get there. It's because of Jesus. And that's the name of the child that Mary, you're going to have. That name is Jesus. Can you imagine Mary's thoughts? As that song says, Mary, did you know? When you were thinking and raising up that child... Did you really think that was the Son of God? When you were holding that little baby. Now, parents, when we have children, most of us think that our children are the best. Now, I'm sure there are some of you that didn't. And I would understand how some of you felt. <laughs> but most of us think that our child is the very best. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm very strongly thinking on this. I will stand anywhere and say this. I, I'm telling you, my kids were great. I have two sons, married two great girls. But I think a whole lot more of my grandkids than I do my kids. <laughs> I'm telling you, I got seven of them, and if I'd had them first, I'd think I'd be a lot better off. <laughs> I don't know how that worked, but I, it just is. <clears throat> they come over to the house and sometimes they run in the house and say something to me and sometimes they just run, go straight to the playroom. But before they leave, they're coming to see me. And they're going to climb up in my lap, sit in my chair, and there'll probably be three of them sitting in my chair. And my wife wonders why my recliner is broke down. It's because it's got 14 people sitting in it most of the time. <laughs> and we don't just sit still. We're having a big time. Can you imagine Mary growing up, baby Jesus, and, and her sitting there holding baby Jesus? I wonder if she ever said, Jesus, you can't do that because, you know, you're, you're Jesus. I wonder if Jesus ever looked at her and said, yeah, you can't do that to me because I am Jesus. <laughs> That's what I'd have done. That's why I'm not Jesus. Mary, did you know? Did you know Mary's character? Did you know <clears throat> Mary's child? But did you see what happens when she hears all this? In, in verse 34, you hear her consecration. You hear her reply. You hear her stand. Verse 34 says, Then Mary said unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? Mary had a question. I'd have had a hundred questions. 
Verse 35 says, And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Her question was, How can this be? And the angel spoke to her in a terminology that she would understand when he said it would envelop you, it would take a hold of you. It would be like when the tabernacle was built and and God would take place in the Holy of Holies and he would envelop, he would take over and cover that entire place. He says, God's going to do that to you, Mary. And when, when I do that to you, Mary, listen, I want you to understand that this shall be the Son of God. And to confirm this, I want you to understand verse 36. Thy cousin Elizabeth, she's also conceived a son in her old age. This is the sixth month with her, which was called barren. You know why that was? Verse 37 gives you all the answers. For with God nothing shall be impossible. Let me ask you, what's going on in your... Can I say it this way? What's going on in your little life right now? And and I say little life because compared to Mary's, yours is a little life. I mean, she's laying there. I I, I picture Mary laying there in bed and an angel coming. Is your life anything like that? But how is your life right now? Does your life understand that it is enveloped with God? Can you imagine your life being covered and you being all surrounded by God's presence? The God that was there with Mary, listen to me very carefully, the God that was there with me is the same God that's here today, that's available to you today. The difference is we push him away today because we got other things that need to be put forth first in our minds. But Mary, when she heard these words and she understood that nothing is impossible with God, verse 38, Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Do you get what Mary said? Mary said when she understood what had happened here and the conversation had taken place, Mary said, Here I am. Send me. Let me ask you, when was the last time you said that? Here I am, send me. Here I am, Lord, right here. I'll do whatever it is. Take it. You give me the plan. You give me the, 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 the direction of how you're going to do it because with you all things are possible. Then we're going to get it done. I don't know how it's going to be, but Lord, here I am. Some of us this morning need to simply say, here I am. Some of us need to say, Lord, here I am, take me. Wherever I am. Whatever I'm doing. Whatever the situation is. No matter what's going on in my life. It has been, and everybody says this, it's been a crazy year. And it really has been. I mean, it really has. And I don't just mean with the COVID stuff. I mean just the normal stuff at Gary Smith's house. I don't know about your house, but it has been for my house. Just crazy stuff going on. But you know what? In the midst of all that craziness, God is still right there in the midst. You know, not only is he right there in the midst, but get this, God is still in control. Oh, I, somebody asked me this past week, said, hey, what to, do you think would have happened if Mary had said no? If the angel had appeared unto Mary and told all this was going to take place and then looked down there and instead of in verse 38, Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord. What if Mary had said, No thanks? What would have took place? I mean, seriously, what do you think would have happened if Mary had said, No, preacher? That's what they said to me. I said, Well, Mary wouldn't have said no because it was God's plan is already all worked out. God had this all taken care of. 
You don't understand that a lot of times the things that happen in your life, it, you don't have any control over whether you say yes or no. God's still going to run this plan out. Do you hear what I'm saying? He's still got a plan. Well, preacher, if I don't say something, then, then I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. L listen, listen to what a preacher told me this past week. He said, listen, he said, y'all having problems over there at your church with that pandemic thing? Well, yeah. He said, well, you know what? I got people telling me <coughs> that they're not going to come back until the pandemic's over. You know what I told them? I said, no. I told them, then just go ahead and give up all your positions in our church because our church is going to move forward with or without you. You know what I said? You're an idiot. <laughs> oh, sorry. I said, you can't say that. Where do you have the arrogance to say that, thinking that you are better than God is? You don't. God's got a plan. He's going to work it out whether they come or not. Listen, don't worry about that stuff. You just keep on with the path. Don't worry about what's going on around you. Worry about you and God. When I'm driving around in my car, you know who I worry about? Me. I listen to that crazy little thing on my phone that says go 200 more yards and turn right. Let me tell you what I did this past week. I did. <clears throat> Somebody sent me a Facebook message. Hey, Pastor Gary, can I get a, a Sunday school book? I said, sure. I will gladly bring it to your house. Would you like a teacher book or an adult book? I thought it was one of my teachers. And they said, no, just an adult book. I said, okay. I will bring it tomorrow. Got in my car the next day, had the book in my front seat, took off, punched in the, the address into my little GPS and took off down that way, got pulled into their driveway. Pulled into their driveway and I thought, you know, when I said to them, do you want a teacher's book or an adult book? And they said, no, why would I want a teacher's book? Just an adult book. Why would a teacher say that to me? I pulled in their driveway, and I'm sitting there in my driveway thinking of this, and I thought, is this who I thought it was? Because it just gave me the first name, you know. And I clicked on it, and no, it wasn't. I was in the wrong driveway. I left them a book anyway. <laughs> and then I got back in my car and drove to the right house and left them a book. Someone I hadn't been to church in a while. Wanting to have the lesson still, even though we're not meeting. You know why that is? It's because God's plan's going on with or without us, folks. And Mary looked up to the Lord and said, Here I am, behold, the handmaid of the Lord. Be it unto me according to thy word. And guess what? The angel departed. I don't know about you. But when the angel came to the Lord, when, when the angel came to Mary, I, I would have been petrified. I, I tell you, I've been scared to death. I don't like, I don't like that kind of stuff. I don't like, you know, if you want to call them ghosts, you call them ghosts. I, I don't like stuff that I cannot explain. I like to be able to explain everything. Now, I know that that's very hard to do as being pastor because I don't explain half the stuff that goes on because I can't. Other than with God, all things are possible. That's my explanation. I don't like that. I would have been scared to death. But it doesn't say Mary was scared. It just says, well, how can that be? She was so cool, so calm, collected. And not only how can that be, hey, listen. She said, after hearing from the Lord, listen to this. She said, here I am. Here's your handmaid. Let's do this. Now, do you understand the commitment that Mary made? Some of us make a commitment to the Lord, and we won't even make a commitment for a few months to do something in the church. Mary made a commitment at least for nine months. Hey, she's going to carry the child. Not only is that, but she's going to have to raise this little rascal. Have, have you thought about what it's like to raise a kid today? Well, it's not easy. And I don't care who you are out, in, out there in TV land or wherever you are or you're sitting here and you think kids aren't as smart as they used to be, they're way smarter. 
my, my little four-year-old grandson, he said, Papa, I want to play a game on your phone. I said, no. I don't let him play on my phone. You can play on my iPad, you can play on my QE, I don't care, but not on my phone. Because if somebody texts me or, or calls me, they won't tell you. So I said, no. So he was sitting in my lap in the recliner, and, and you know what he did? He took my phone. He had it there, and he said, hey. I said, what? And he held it up to my face. You know why he held my phone up to my face? To unlock it. He unlocked my phone and started going through my apps at four years old, trying to find a game on my phone. You tell me they're not smarter than us? They are smart. And Mary had this child, Jesus. They didn't have those electronics back then. They didn't have those things. But I'm telling you, could you imagine training up and teaching the Christ child? And you think your job's tough? Well, let, let me ask you this. What, what is your job with the Lord today? What, what, what is your task with the Lord today? Mary's job was to drain up Jesus, to bear the child Jesus. She was going to raise him. She was going to feed him. She was going to clothe him because nothing is impossible with God. What's your job? Well, let me ask you this. Are you doing it? Are you doing it anyway? Amidst the pandemic, amidst the problems, amidst all the things that are going on, listen to me, if God called you to do something, just do it. He's going to protect you. He's going to take care of you. He's going to train you. He's going to equip you. He's going to give you everything that you need to take care of the task. Just do it. What do you need to do today? <clears throat> it's the Sunday before Christmas. We got presents all around the tree. I'll get here on my little soapbox for just a minute. Christmas is, to me is not what it used to be. <clears throat> Nowadays we say, well, here's, here's a list of things that we would like. I don't, I don't like that. I'm weird. I'm not, I don't like that. I, I, I like surprises. I don't care if I don't like it. If I don't like it, you thought I should get it, so give it to me. You know, little boxes of candy like I got this morning, they're good. Those are good things. It's kind of like a surprise to me. I like the surprise. Maybe you need to be surprised this morning and just step out and do what God wants you to do and watch Him take care of everything else. Maybe that is what we're lacking. We're lacking a little surprise in our life. Because we think that we can do it and we can make out the list. We can do all this. Tell everybody what to get us. Get it all and let's move on. Let's have a surprise this Christmas. You think Mary wasn't surprised? <laughs> In the words of Gomer Powell, Ooh. can't imagine what she thought. Till I read the scripture, the scripture says, Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Father, we come to you right now. I ask you to cleanse and forgive us. And Lord, I pray that we could say today, this morning, I pray that we could say, Behold, here I am. Here I am. Lord, I don't know how it's going to happen. I don't know how we're going to do it, but here I am. I'm willing to take the first step. I'm willing to step out on faith. I'm willing to go the extra mile. <clears throat> as long as you're in front. This morning, we, we need to step out realizing that he's in front of us. That he's willing to walk through whatever ahead of us.
But we've got to be willing to step out. Some of us just hanging on till this or that takes place or this or that happens. And God is saying, just step on out. This morning, I pray that we would look into our own hearts, not, not our neighbor heart, not, not our family member's hearts, but our individual heart, and say, what do I need to say this morning? What could be my present to the Lord today? What could I say to Him? What could I acknowledge of Him that would be a blessing to Him? Lord, I pray we'd be willing to do it. Willing to do it in our own heart, Lord. Not, not for me, but for them individually. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. As we stand and sing just a quick hymn, not going to take long. If you need to come, you come on, you can pray. I'll be standing here if you need to talk to me. If not, you can just come and pray. Whatever you need to do. Will you do it right now? Go ahead, Brother Mitch. You can use anything, Lord. You can use me. If you can use anything, Lord. Feet. Touch my heart, Lord, speak through me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Touch my heart, Lord, speak through me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Just going to ask you to bow your head for just a, for just a second. We're almost done. Just a second. Nobody looking around. You, you don't need to see what's going on. You just need to bow your head. Close your eyes for just a minute. But would you be willing to say to, to Pastor Gary this morning that I haven't done it, but I want to do it. Will you pray for me? Whatever it is the Lord wants me to do, I haven't yet, but I want to. Would you just quickly lift your hand up? Not going to acknowledge it. I'm just going to pray for you. Anybody anywhere? Anybody else? I haven't yet, but I want to. Will you pray for me? That's all I'm asking. Just to pray for you. All right, thank you. God bless you. Pray you have a great week this week. Don't forget tonight at 6 o'clock, Brother Charles will be preaching. Pray for him today. It's his it's his birthday, and he's and he's injured, and, and he can't raise. Is it his right arm or his left arm? Right arm, and you're right-handed, aren't you? Poor little thing, I'm telling you. How old is Charles today? I'm sorry. Forty what? Forty-six. Wow, Charles, I didn't realize you was forty-six. It's not very young. I mean, yeah, that's young. 
compared to my age, it's really young. 46, that's crazy. All right. So you'll be praying for him. He'll be preaching tonight. Is it somebody else's birthday? Oh. Mm, I'm not going to go there. All right. <laughs> but I think it's somebody's birthday over here. It's related to faith. But anyway, you check, check with them on their way out. All right. Don't forget your offerings on your way out. Tonight, 6 o'clock. <clears throat> if you've not saved your seat for a Christmas Eve service, please do that. Uh, it'll help us out. We understand the numbers are going up with COVID and all that stuff. We're doing the best we can. Pray for us as we make the right decisions in all of our situations that we do. All right? God bless you. Have a great week. Anything else I forgot? Nothing that you can think of? Great. Have a good week. Mitch, are you going to sing something to get us out of here? Perfect. That would be awesome, Mitch. But take that little thing off of your mouth so that we'll be able to hear you. So as Mitch starts singing, you all can be dismissed. You're so helpful. Thank you. Anything. Anything. It came upon a midnight clear that cold.